Hey little hoes, my name is Kristen and welcome back to my channel. So today's topic is going to be bad plant mail and how to avoid it and everything associated with it. Spring is upon us and I know if you guys are anything like me, I've been scouring looking at all these cool places to order plants from. Maybe it is a negative topic, but I think it's kind of important. The more that we can share information about bad experiences, the more we can learn and hopefully prevent other people from experiencing the same. So I'm going to dive right into this. These are just some of my thoughts on the subject. If you guys disagree with any of these or have any tips of your own to share, please comment down below. I would love to hear them and I think a lot of other people might benefit from them. So number one, do your research. It's an obvious one, but very important. Look at other sites for reviews. Make sure they're reputable sites. Go to the Better Business Bureau. Look at Facebook reviews. Dave's Garden Watchdog Yelp if it is a retail nursery. Also look for YouTube unboxing videos as well as Instagram tags on the business just to kind of give an idea what you should expect. Ask garden forums, plant forums, see if anyone has first-hand experience ordering from them. Two, learn to interpret reviews and read between the lines. Does the reviews seem legit? Are they all way too positive? Do they seem realistic and fair? Because, quite frankly, even craft store Karens with may I see your manager haircuts order plants. And we all know that they like to complain about little things. So be fair to the seller. If it seems like it is very nitpicky, then, you know, treat it with a grain of salt. Maybe the company's not as bad as all that. Three, pictures are worth a thousand words, especially if it's not just of the mother plant or stock plants and actual pictures of what you will receive. Use those pictures to gauge your expectations and check them. Keep in mind the plant in the picture is not always what you will receive. So I also wanted to mention before I forgot that um, if you're ordering overseas, which I have never done yet, uh, make sure that there is a phytosanitary certificate and any other proper documents needed to go between countries for those plants. Um, you are taking a risk, obviously, if you decide not to get those or purchase from a seller that doesn't offer them. So just be aware. Expectations versus reality. Ordering is not the same as going and picking out a plant. You're not always able to pick out the best or your favorite from a group of plants. It's kind of what the seller has and what they choose for you. It's always best to try and get a plant um, in person and especially locally if you can. Two, and I think this one's a really important one, don't expect to be the exception. If majority of the reviews are negative, if people are saying that the plants are pathetic, very likely you will not be the exception. Who is at fault if a plant mail order goes bad? It's hard to remain unbiased when it's your hard-earned money at stake and you have so much excitement um, expecting these plants. It's really hard not to, you know, think of it just from your point of view when something goes wrong. But keep in mind, guys, it's not always the seller's fault. Which brings me to my first point in this portion, the post service. And love them or hate them, it is a whirlwind and unfortunately they don't always handle with care nor do they always get your package to you in the expected time frame. Plants invariably will get banged up in transit despite the seller packaging with the utmost of care. Two, don't forget accidents happen and 
Sometimes no one is at fault. Acts of nature happen and shouldn't be blamed on the seller. Try and think of it if you were a seller and how you would feel in this situation. Keep in mind, they are people too, and they are not always the bad guy. Three, don't be stupid. This is a big one. This is a big one and possibly controversial, but I'm just going to say it. Don't be stupid, guys. Did you buy a plant in winter without a heat pack and it came in frozen? It's your fault. Did you buy a plant around the holidays and it came in five days late and dead? It's your fault. Or maybe you were trying to save some money and decided not to get the priority mail. The plants came in dead. It's your fault. Did you take your chances and purchase plants in the heat of summer and they arrived on your doorstep looking like burnt toaster strudel? It's your fault. Now on to when it is the seller's fault. And I think this is all pretty common sense, guys, but I will say it anyway. When it arrived and it's clearly not the plant you ordered, or it is a reversion, if it came in diseased, pest-ridden, root rot, or DOA for no apparent reason, that is the seller's fault. Also, if the plant is not fully rooted out and you didn't purchase it that way, that is also the seller's fault. Two, they packaged carelessly. So it's hard to package each plant according to their needs or guess how they will react to being in the mail or after they are received. But if a seller is knowledgeable and experienced, they should know not to send a lithops soaking wet in the mail, for instance. So keep that in mind. Um, a seller should be able to pack according to a plant's needs. If a seller lies to you, gives you excuses, the runaround, or just straight up scams you, takes your money without delivering a plant, that is obviously the seller's fault, not yours. On to the final portion of this, guys. Trying to recoup any losses that you might have incurred through bad plant mail. One thing that I have found is try and pay through PayPal if you can, or a controlled selling platform like Etsy or eBay. And I will get into this in a little bit, my experiences with them. But try and make a claim as soon as you can uh, if the company is not willing to work with you. Also, I have never done it, but canceling payment to the company or seller through your bank is an option. Overall, guys, live and learn and share your experiences, be it good or bad, because it can only help others. Now I want to kind of touch on some bad experiences I have had in plant mail. I think a lot of you will remember my ongoing problems with the people's plants. I did several videos on that. My initial experience with them was good and then bad and baffling, to say the least. And I did get my money back through PayPal since I used them to purchase the plants. They launched an investigation, tried to contact the people's plants, and after not getting any sort of response, not being able to communicate with them, they did resolve in my favor. Also, I had a bad transaction on Etsy, and I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in my past videos or not. This was last year, and I was on the hunt for a ring of fire philodendron. Well, I found a great priced one on Etsy. This seller had quite a lot of reviews, which seemed legitimate, and I still believe they were real reviews because they were not all five star. They were various amounts of stars associated with this particular seller. 
A lot of people said that they were a little bit disappointed with the size, but they arrived, which was obviously a green flag for me. Go ahead and purchase from them. I did, and one week goes by and I received nothing. I was patient, and at the end of that, I contacted the seller and asked, hey, where's my plant? It's been a while. The ship date has come and gone. The label was created, but nothing was shipped out. There was no sort of tracking from the time the label was made to a week later. They initially said that they were in, I believe, a different part of the country or a different country altogether and had somebody in the States who packaged the items for them and sent to the customer. Apparently, something was lost in communication between um, this seller and their packager because they sold out even though it said that they still had a quantity on hand. They offered to either refund me or if I wanted to wait another week, they would have a fresh shipment. Well, the price was too good to pass up and I was willing to wait. I had been waiting quite a while to find one in the first place, so I figured what's another week or so. So I accepted and again, the same thing happened. The seller made a label, but never shipped it out. And I contacted the seller again saying, hey, this is happening again, what's up? And after contacting, emailing, emailing, emailing day after day, Finally, I get frustrated with the lack of communication and getting the runaround and asked Etsy to intervene in this, uh, this purchase. They looked into it and decided, yes, indeed, the seller was at fault and refunded me the money, which I am very happy about. They did it in a very timely manner. I was very impressed with them. Um, I know that people that sell on Etsy have had issues with this. Um, Etsy always or frequently finding in favor of the purchaser versus the seller. But in my case, I am very appreciative of it because this was going nowhere fast and I wasn't reaching a resolution with the seller. And that seller then contacted me afterwards saying, well, I offered you a refund and you decided not to take it. That was weeks ago, buddy. So yeah, all in all, bad plant mail happens, bad orders happen. And even if you do all your research, you look through the reviews, you make a very informed decision, sometimes bad things happen. And um, I think it's just important to live and learn, like I said. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it wasn't too ranty and stayed on topic pretty well. But I would love to hear your experiences, be they good or bad. And any tips you guys have on plant mail and ordering and how to avoid bad plant mail. Anyway, I think that will do it for today. And I appreciate y'all watching and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.